Here's everything that we've covered on Thursday, April 4th. I'm gonna start actually with the last thing that we just covered. But if you're, if you're tuning in right now to the podcast, for example, you will hear a conversation of us announcing a new tool for generative AI and LLM application called Weave from Weights and Biases. You heard it here first. We are announcing a new toolkit called Weave from Weights and Biases, which is a suite of tools for developing and productionizing generative AI applications. You can actually check out our docs if you are one of these people that are like trying to apply AI to to build applications, like maybe a RAG app or whatever, you can go to wandb.me slash weave, and you can check out our docs. Should be pretty easy to get started. And we really, really excited to announce this on Thursday, but also broadly. Additionally, from Weights and Biases, we're coming to San Francisco in two weeks where we're going to actually talk about Weave as well. And so we have a workshop on April 17th and we have our annual conference called Fully Connected on April 18th. And uh, actually, I got a promo code for you guys. So if you are in San Francisco during those times or you're looking for a, an excuse to your boss to go to San Francisco, there's, there's not a better conference that week in San Francisco than Fully Connected. And if you sign up right now with the promo code Thursday I. Uh, not only will you get 50% off of your ticket, I will also know that you signed up because you're a Thursday I a fan and come and give me a high five and meet the rest of the team. We started with talking in the open source that Princeton released something called Agent, SVE Agent. If you guys remember, we talked about Devin before. So this is the open source version of something like a Devin Agent. Uh, they get an incredible 12.3 score on SVE bench, the benchmark that's like really hard to do. And Devin was very, very famous for getting 13% there. Just for comparison, regular GPT-4 plus RAG gets 1.4% on that score, right? So just so you don't understand how difficult this is. And they do this by giving their agent uh, their own like Docker container and something called agent computer interface, which allows it to browse and search and edit and run code. Very interesting. So if you guys remember last week, AI21 released something called Jamba, which is a hybrid, hybrid architecture that uses Mamba, the state space model, and then also joined attention and they basically getting the both the benefit of both worlds both from transformers and the state space models for larger context and higher throughput so we were i was very lucky to have roy from ai21 join us and talk to us about jamba and kind of the decisions behind this architecture in the paper ai21 our customers with some biases and i get to work at this amazing place where we, like pretty much everybody's a customer and so we, we reached out and we told them like hey congrats on the release do you guys want to come and they're like yes so today we're going to have a chat with roy cohen um, Jamba is the first scale up of the Mamba architecture. It's an architecture that combines Mamba and Transformer both benefits and it uses both blocks of Mamba and Transformer, more Mamba than Transformer. It's also a mixture of experts model and there are more architecture decisions that we can go on. Let me know if you want to stop here and continue, but there were some things we, we saw that we don't need positional encoding. We saw some issues with the loss stability that we had to fix with RMS norm. And there was a lot, of, of course, a lot of experiments run with weights and biases. And also one of the reasons why they open sourced Jamba was to support the community fine tune as, as well. So I was very happy to also join this conversation with Maxim, Maxim Lebon, who we've talked previously about merging, but he's also very interested in SSMs. So he actually released a new fine tune of Jamba on the Platypus uh, dataset today. Yeah, I released Jamba Tipus, which is like a, a very modest and very humble fine tune of Jamba because it uses the open Platypus dataset. So it's about 20k samples, one EP. We then covered that Justine Tooney, backed up by Mozilla, released a new update for Llama file. We also had breaking news today from Cohere. Cohere came up with an upgraded model. Cohere uh, called it Command R Plus. Uh, it's a significantly bigger reg optimized 104 billion parameter model that spe specifically is fine-tuned for RAG purposes. It has also extended context. It has 128,000 uh, tokens of context in it, and it's multilingual. It supports 10 languages fairly quick. It looks like an incredible model. We had a chat with Nisten and Yam about this, so very excited to see how much this bigger model will perform as well. Uh, we had a very interesting discussion about the new paper from 
Deep Mind called Mixture of Depth Paper. And I want to thank uh, LDJ and uh, Justin uh, for the deep dive into this paper. We actually mentioned two other open source stuff from our friends, John Durbin. Uh, he re-released the Bagel series and I think Aeroboros as well on top of Yi34B with 200,000 contacts window. So shout out to John Durbin. And then also Eric Hartford released a new Dolphin as well on top of the new Mistral that we've mentioned before, the 0.2 base Mistral. And uh, these are like the top of the folks that we know in the open source community the data sets are great. So shout out to John Durbin and Eric Hartford. And also, we, we should definitely mention that Maxime uh, Lebon, also a friend of the pod who's here with us and had a deep dive conversation, also released a fine tune of Jamba uh, on top of the Platypus data set as well. So this is it in the open source. Then we talked about big companies, LLMs and their APIs. And I think the highlight there was Cloudflare. Cloudflare, me and Nistin talked about how they're slept on by many people. They still are thought of as like DNS, but in fact, they have this vast workers platform where you can build and deploy platform, deploy applications. And they recently stepped into the AI game with workers.ai. And so now they announced the workers.ai is like in general availability now. They announced pricing. They also announced the workers now run Python and they have integrated with Langchain and Llama Index. And hopefully now that we've announced Weave, they're going to have Weave there as well. I'm going to talk to some folks in Cloudflare about this. But I, I just want to highlight that they've added a bunch of models in the Cloudflare AI offering. So Cloudflare will run those GPUs for you and you will not have to have a, like a Linux machine. It will all be serverless. And they, they now have models like Mistral 7B Instruct and DeepSeek and Llama and Quen 1.5B. Like They have a bunch of models there in Cloudflare, which has been quite now you can run them in this worker AI platform. They also announced an integration with Hugging Face. So for these models, you can one click Hugging Face and install these like models on your Cloudflare account. And they also, very interesting thing they announced is a fine tune support via bring your own LoRas. So you can fine tune models and train them with LoRa and then take the artifact of that and put it in your Cloudflare account. So you basically are able to to uh, productize fine tune models on top of Cloudflare. Super cool announcement from Cloudflare. As I mentioned before, we ship Cloudflare, but we don't we don't get paid for them. Uh, but they're a super cool company. Don't sleep on Cloudflare and give them a try. We then talked about OpenAI's a few announcements. OpenAI opened up GPT 3.5 to everybody who visits the website without login requirements, without having to provide the phone number. Very interesting move from OpenAI there. Also, we mentioned briefly that OpenAI released a voice engine blog so they released a, a new blog that said hey we actually built something called voice engine uh, but we're not going to give it to you we only give it to a few select partners because it's really election season around the world for this year and so we don't want to overcomplicate how natural a deep faked voice can sound so openai has announced voice engine but did not release this and the last thing that openai actually in the breaking news matter announced is an improvement on their fine-tuning service including some examples from companies like Harvey that significantly improved their models. So not only improvement in, in fine-tuning service, they now integrate well with weights and biases. We're actually the only platform to get integrated with OpenAI when you fine-tune something. So you can now fine-tune with OpenAI and get a nice weights and biases dashboard. It's super cool. Um, and they announced a bunch of new tooling for fine-tune so you can actually compare the outputs of two models. So if you are fine-tuning but you don't want to do this alone on your GPUs, you're now able to do it for 3.5. Um, very cool blog post from OpenAI and uh, shout out to them for integrating uh, with us as well. Um, we then covered that Replit had their dev day yesterday and Replit has big moves on AI definitely because more than 10 million, I actually don't know the number, but like I think said 100 million or something folks use Replit. They had the, the, their dev day yesterday and they announced a new model called Replit Code Repair. We then covered a little bit news of Google. Logan Kilpatrick, the dev rel for OpenAI that recently left, announced he joins Google's AI from Gemini, which is great and good luck, Logan. And also Google announced Gemini prices, finally. And one last thing in the uh, big companies and LMs and APIs that we covered, Grok with the Q, the company with the LPUs, the super fast inference chips, lends function calling. As I just talked about, Cohere's command R function calling is a big thing that many people are looking for, developers building rag applications top they actually need function calling for a bunch of this so if you are using grok for the fast inference they now support function calling slash tool use as well just a little bit after we finished recording anthropic also released a official beta of their function calling slash tool use as well I think we're moving forward and to voice and audio category. We've covered in OpenAI's voice engine that will not be released to developers, but we definitely talked at least a little bit that you and your loved ones have to have the conversation that your voice can be cloned. Don't trust anything that people 
say that sounds weird and teach your mom and grandma that they shouldn't trust them either. Also in the audio category, we talked about Stable Audio version 2, which you can actually check out for free on stableaudio.com. It's not open source, so the era of stability releasing open source stuff is potentially over, but it's still super, super cool. We actually played a the, played the little sample. You can use audio to audio, so you can like record yourself hum or beat on your table to beatbox and ask for drums or bass or bass line or whatever. And also we covered that you can now run Whisper on MLX and it's 10 times as fast as Whisper.cpp. So for those of you who are building like voice application and if you use Lightning Whisper MLX, you'll get like super fast uh, automatic speech recognition with Whisper. I think that's pretty much it of what we covered in voice and audio. The last thing that we've barely mentioned, OpenAI also released DALI in painting. So right now, if you go to ChatGPT, if you pay for it, you can generate an image. You can click on this image. You can paint out some areas of this image and ask DALI to repaint them, which is super cool because you can iterate on, on an output, continue, and then get the results that you want. Definitely check this out. And we ended the conversation with something that I started with, weights and biases releasing Weave, and I will end on this as well.